thank you for just unbelievably beautiful film with an unbelievably beautiful and inspirational message. That's just uh, each of those causes uh, was more worthy than the last, and and there's 32 of them all together. So we only touched the sort of the scratch the surface here. Um, but it was just a beautifully made film, I have to say, with uh, the the visuals, the storytelling, and and cutting back and forth between the discussions of the the causes and and the programs that they were doing with the with the paddle, with uh, the outdoor scenes, with the things that they were doing. It just kept it so moving, and the, the rhythm of it was beautiful. And, and visually, it was just incredible. I mean, I'd like to talk about that a little bit. But let's start at the beginning. Um, what, at what point in uh, Paddlers for Humanity did you decide, let's make a film? What was that about? You're a producer, you're a co-founder, what's, what's the story? Well, our executive producer, Thomas O'Donohue, is uh, also a paddler. And so this was his passion project. And um, my husband, John Desain, and I have been working on other projects with Tom. And so it was, this was his baby. And he decided, let's, let's do it. And so we did. So, but uh, as, as far as, because it, it is, the film itself is a thing that uh, not only advertises for what Paddlers for Humanity does, but talks about these these programs and what the, the importance of the mission that's going on here with the programs that are supported. So was that a thing that the, the board decided, let's have a film, a, a film is a great idea to, to advance our cause? Uh, sure. Um, again, I give a lot of credit to Tom for coming up with the idea. And when he did, uh, and he had already engaged with John and Jennifer, we were thrilled, of course, and then uh, realized that our, like a lot of nonprofits, our message uh, that you know can only reach so many people by typical methods. So a film like this, the idea is to reach a lot more people and get the message out. As as we said in the film, a lot and as well as for the nonprofits. So if we can help to bring awareness to them through this film, we're thrilled. Yeah, well, I think it it definitely did the, did that amazingly. I thought it was I mean, it's hard for me not to sort of tear up at all the different ones that they were doing. We like that. Uh, I, I could I was could feel that I was being manipulated, but it was a beautiful thing. Uh, it, was, it really done well. Um, so, at what point did you come on board, Jonathan, uh, when this project was hatched? Um, well, relative to the beginning, I guess. Uh, you know, there there had been some other work done the previous year, and I had that access to that footage, much of which was the paddle, which was and some of the good footage. And, um, you know, and at that point, it was just a question of, of making the charities kind of the point um, and having the, the experience of, of raising money for them be kind of the, the, the second story, the kind of uh, uh, subtext to the whole thing, where it seemed to me a, a brilliant solution to a particular community that has, um, is misrepresented all over the world as this kind of monolithic rich place right. where nobody suffers. And because of that, and to some extent, people do suffer. And, you know, like they do everywhere else, but the Hamptons sort of has a, has a block to, to people's being able to perceive that easily because of its reputation. So it just seemed like a, a, a wonderful solution to not only that, but kind of to the fact that our government is essentially useless when it comes to <laughs> helping people. The most important things, need, yeah. yeah. Right. And, you know, it seemed like a, a really smart template for people to pay attention to, to see how they could address issues in their own communities themselves um, without relying on government program. I mean, some, of, some government programs are involved in this, I think, but the heart of it is local charities created by local people who are aware of and have experienced through their families uh, a lot of what these issues do. 
Yeah, and creating awareness uh, creates uh, a whole other level of participation, and we track that in the film with uh, Ed, Ed Cashin, is his name? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he says, well, is this just Project Most? It's just babysitting. I mean, and let me go see what it is. And next thing you know, it's like, oh my God, this is so incredible. And so more people that know about these things, the more, the more support they can gain. And it, it always uh, doubled back to the, the paddlers, and what do they get out of this? And right. yes, it's not just a fun paddle, and it's like, it's like the polar bear plunge coming up next week for the, the community food pantry. It's like, okay, you jump in the water for, you know, it's freezing cold, but you do it as a group, and it supports, you know, feeding people f through the winter. So, you know, and there's a lot more to it than just a, a fun lark of yeah. jumping in the water. So, um, but, it, it, and the way that it came together, um, what, you went out and shot with all the nonprofits? And so when was the, pad the paddle that's shown here? Uh, is it 2016, it was 2017? It was 2017. We've since done an 18 paddle, of course. Right. Um, how did that one go? Uh, it was good. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> another challenging paddle, but it was good. Well, I don't know how it's not going to be challenging. It's interesting. We saw a film earlier today about uh, a man, Manly, who, uh, who went across the, uh, the Atlantic in a 13 and a half foot boat. Uh, the, the entire Atlantic, not just a block island, <laughs> and uh, and you're thinking how small that is, and it's not. It's, that's even uh, a little bigger than the paddleboard. Yeah, uh, don't. And I've been through Block Island Channel, so it gets a little. It's like the Gulf Stream. Uh, it's high agitation on a washing machine. The guy described it exactly right, because the the waves don't always come from a consistent direction. So, um, but how long did it take you to make the film? You said you had footage of the paddle. Well, so. We shot a promo piece for Paddlers in 2016 for, of that pa particular paddle. Uh -huh. uh, it was a 10-minute short, um, so we did have footage from that paddle. But most of the of the of the footage is from the 2017 paddle and the charities that we reached out to. Other than I believe the robotics team um, were all charities we reached out to in 2017 that Paddlers has, has formed relationships with through the years. Okay, so um, when the robotics came later? No, robotics has been for a while, correct? Okay. okay. Yeah, it's, I think we started with them, I think we started with Bridgehampton in 14, if I'm not mistaken, maybe 15. And um, they've been great partners because they had, again, they have this overview program, this positive behavioral intervention services, and we've, I think they're appreciative that we've given them some flexibility with how that our money goes to them, and they've been able to create these create these various programs, not only robotics, but they've they've created a, a farm stand. The farm stand right next to the school is something that we've helped fund for them, um, and and a few others that um, hopefully are enriching the lives of those kids. Well, I think you definitely are, and that's another one that Ed wanted to join. You know, it's like, you know, I want to be in the robotics program. So it's, and it, everybody wants to do all those different things because they are so, so helpful. Um, and and the, the other thing that was struck me about the film was that the organic nature of Paddlers itself, of that it's not about a, a big administration, you know, of 501c3, but it's just, it's, it's about figuring out what are the best programs, how can they best do it with a mission of children and positivity. And, and you can see how that plays out in the way, and one of the, one of the trainers for paddling in the ocean was talking about how so much could be averted, how much could traces back to mental health issues, how much traces back to isolationism, how much to the, the, not, the lack of mentors, the lack of community, the lack of connection. Um, so it just seems like really, really beautiful that it, the way that it developed organically. And to your point, Jonathan, that while it is seen as this monolithic sort of, you know, summer community is so wealthy and then sort of the downtrodden rear round community that doesn't really, you know, what's the deal with them? They're just, they're here for service and so forth. But the, the, the way that uh, Paddlers tied together the, some of the wealthier people who wanted to give back, who, who felt the, the beauty of this area and, and understood that, and then with the community, and then becomes one, and it's another kind of connection and another kind of getting together. So, um, where, where does the where does the film go from here? Well, you know, I for me, I've had the pleasure of riding along with paddlers for the last three years, and you know, this organization has opened my eyes to so many wonderful things that go on in this community 
people helping people, and that's that's the, the, the crux of it. And you know, in the last three years, I've had my children saying, "Oh, mommy, you know, what are you doing? Why are you always doing? What are you doing?" I'm like, "I'm working with paddlers." I'm like, "Who are paddlers?" You know, we're we're a local family as well. And it's not an exaggeration. They are superheroes on paddle boards. It really, that's really what they're doing. And they're doing it in the most humble you know, way possible, quietly, and just you know, working magic through, through their channels. And I hope that the film helps, helps that mission along the way. And I hope that it's highlighted it for all of you just to see things that maybe you didn't know were going on right next door. Yeah, well, I'm hoping that, I, I mean, I know it did for me, and I'm sure it did for everybody here, because it is very effectively done, and it's so beautiful. I mean, it shows how beautiful it is out here. I love some of the photography. Um, I mean, the cutting and the editing was was a kind of amazing, um, but some of that water level photography, and some of the, the photography of the surf, and the, and just, and the way that it was, the way that it was put together, it was just absolutely showed the beauty of the community, and showed the beauty of the spirit of the community, the spirit of, of paddlers, and how that connects to these different programs they do. Um, and I would, I would hope that, that more people would be able to see this. So I hope that you can campaign it around the East End a little bit, um, if not to a wider, wider audience for you know, similar situations. I mean, wherever on the coast where there's paddling, it's, it's huge, of course. But um, so do you think that uh, like schools, like um, other places where it can be museums, you know, at the parish, at, at Guildhall, other things like that? You know, are there any plans to try and take it around Absolutely. at all? Absolutely. I think it's, it's crucial. I mean, the schools are so involved as it is. I mean, you saw East Hampton School District, Bridgehampton School District, and I think it's really important um, for paddlers, but for the community around the world that they're, you know, the, the global community that they're servicing to get the kids involved. Because once you get the children excited and filled with passion for helping their neighbors, then it's just like, it was said in the Build On group, it's a positivity multiplier. You and know, and the Build On wouldn't have existed if it weren't for paddlers? I mean, the East Hampton branch? That's how um, it came about? I, I, yeah, I guess we'll take some credit for that. Yeah. Um, so that we were, I was, I was aware of Build On and uh, had af I've actually been on treks myself with Build On years ago. And um, they, in addition to the... Um, school building trips. They run after school programs in this country, primarily in urban settings all over the country. And what they've recently been doing, or in the last several years, is started at what they call satellite programs so that you can get schools involved, but not with a full after school program. So that's what we were able to bring to East Hampton. And uh, their first year, Priscilla Campbell, who was a teacher at, Bridge, at the school, was the um, liaison and went on the trek. And now Billy Barber, who's in the movie, has been, I think, the last four years. And they're planning another trek in the spring. And uh, as Dan Farnham in the movie said, I mean, it really is a, a, an experience that not only the kids, but anyone who ever would do something like this will never forget. Oh, no, it's, it stays for life. And, and I think the other things, too, um, you look at the, the girl that was talking from the retreat, uh, from the retreat, and she was talking about how she wants to um, be in law, and he wants to be in law enforcement, yeah. and to try and protect people that are in, in the same situation. Yeah. So the people that benefit from this, other people will benefit from it, and, and so that's forth. So that is that is definitely the idea, and that's the positivity that happens. Yeah. Um, and the girl, I think it was Project Most, who had been going since she was in second grade, and now her little sister's involved. So it just, it always gets paid forward, and, and more by children than by anybody else. So. It's great that the paddlers are doing that and uh, and setting that up. I, I I can't say enough about the film and about the program. It's just so inspirational the the way that you've sort of created this thing. And um and and as Ed says at the end, there's nothing to stop it from uh, going forward any farther. So I can I can't thank you enough for making a beautiful film about a really beautiful program. And uh, and I hope that all of you will uh, certainly mark your ballots. And that if you want to talk to these guys further and other um, members, I guess other members of, uh, of Paddlers for Humanity are here today? Yes, we have several right over here. And Tom is here as well. Um, I'll just say that um, as I think it comes through in the film, it's all about community. And 
while a lot of people might be intimidated by the, to actually do the paddle, and I understand that, but if you're in, interested in being involved with us, there are a lot of other ways to do that. So happy to talk about that. Um, the paddle next year is on Saturday, August 10th. Registration will be open this week, so please spread the word. <laughs> Sounds great, and it is about community. It's about the, the, the things that the, the people in the community decided to give back to the community, and it's created a whole other community. And more and more community, we can't, we can't help but do better if we have more community. So thank you very, very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank and you. please, please do.